So today I want to talk a little bit about changing someone's mind, um, which is uh, something that I have been on the receiving end of a lot <laughs> recently. A lot of people trying to change my mind. Um, I find myself on the wrong side or the unpopular side of uh, various issues these days. And so um, there's there's a lot of people who would like to change my mind. And um, you know the way that usually happens is that I'm being presented with um, arguments, like here's why you're wrong. You know, here's this fact, here's this piece of evidence, here's this whatever it is. And we already know that that doesn't work. Um, we know that just presenting people with facts and evidence rarely ever changes their mind. In fact, if they, uh, if it does, it's usually because that person was already questioning their beliefs and the uh, evidence that they were being presented or the argument they were, they were being presented is really just kind of that last piece that pushes them over the edge of a journey that they had already taken. But it doesn't, you know, if someone's set on their belief, um, just throwing a bunch of contrary evidence at them doesn't really do anything. If anything, it can actually harden that belief. So it can actually feel threatening so that we then double down into our belief. And um, what's fascinating to me is that we really readily accept the idea that using pressure or using any means to change someone's mind is okay. So we're not, you know, we don't try to change other people in other ways, right? So um, this, uh, like, I remember when I was um, in my first marriage, uh, my now ex-husband said, well, if you just changed your body, I would love you again. <laughs> um, and it actually resulted in a mutual friend of ours uh, smacking him in the face because she was so upset about his statement because the, um, you know, the implication was like, there's something wrong with you. You need to change. You need to be different. Uh, you need to weigh at, you know, I was 30 and you should weigh as much as you did when you were 19 and look the same because then I would love you again. Um, and we absolutely understand that that's not a good thing to do. That's not a kind thing to do. And to pressure somebody into changing their body, um, you know, when it comes to weight or some other way, we usually frown upon that. But when it comes to changing the mind, we're suddenly like all bets are off. Everything is okay. I mean, we can use pressure. We can be angry. We can, um, it, I mean, pretty much anything goes if we're convinced enough that the other per person's mind is wrong and needs to be fixed and changed. So, um, and yeah, more, more often than not, that backfires. I mean, what happened, what happened for me is I gained more weight when I was told that I needed to lose more weight in order to be lovable again. Uh, that caused me to become depressed. And, and I ate to, uh, to suppress my, um, you know, my sad feelings about, you know, being told by my husband that I'm unlovable, um, because of the way my body is. So it actually, it actually, I actually doubled down, um, uh, on, you know, not making that change that he wanted me to make. Um, uh, and I, I think it's very similar with our minds, you know, when we get pressured to change, when our thinking when our, our minds should be different than they are, uh, the kind of initial reaction is to actually double down on our minds being the way they are and the stories we tell ourselves being the way they are. And um, we have this, we have an understanding that when it comes to our minds and the way we think, uh, we're not islands. We are, we impact one another. So how I think uh, influences how I act, and um, that influences how people are impacted. So my my thinking, my mind is not an isolated entity that has no impact on anyone else. And we're just, I feel like we're just waking up to that in the uh, 
Western world. Uh, you know, we've had this idea of radical individualism that, um, you know, what I do what, with, with my mind, with my body is mine and has no impact on anyone else. And uh, with the mind, we've recognized for some time that, that it does have an impact, um, that when somebody's mind is thinking wrong things, things that don't match reality, it does have an impact on other people and other people's well-being. Um, and now with this pandemic, we're starting to recognize that it goes beyond the mind, that what we do with our bodies has an impact on other people. Um, but there's still, it's still such a myopic, um, small way of recognizing how we impact each other. In other cultures, there has been much more of a recognition that how we feel, how we, you know, like the health of our bodies in all of these different ways, the, the, our mental health, our emotions, our entire, like our entire self has an impact on other people and other people on us. How much I dissociate has an impact on other people. Um, you know, even like if I dissociate while I'm with someone else, it can cause them to dissociate, which can cause them to then uh, have accidents or, you know, not be present for things that they really needed to be present for. So even dissociation, my own personal dissociation can have a negative impact on someone else. Um, so my, like, how, how do we change someone's mind then? And my first answer is we don't, we don't try to force a change. Uh, minds change when they are ready. Um, in the same way that, um, you know, weight loss happens when a person feels ready for that, when they're, whatever was causing them, causing their body to hold excess weight is no longer present, then that weight releases. Um, you know, as for me, it's when I am, you know, uh, like I, I'm an emotional eater, right? So for me, my weight fluctuates based on how much support I have in my life, how, what I'm going through, how much stress I am experiencing. If I have sources of nourishment other than food that can take that place. So I'm not as motivated to binge, um, so it's, there's a, it's a much gentler approach where we don't try to make one another different, but we meet each other where we're at and then bodies and minds and emotions change and become more, more in alignment with reality, more, more whole, more healthy. And that does have a ripple effect on one another. Um, Oh, there's so much more I want to say, but I'm going to keep this short. So basically, I'm just going to start by saying I think that we need to bring consent back into the changing of minds. Um, you know, we do we do consider consent when it comes to uh, wanting somebody to change their body. And I do think it's important that we start bringing consent back into wanting to change somebody's mind. That is not to dismiss the impact that somebody's thinking can have. I absolutely think that recognizing the impact and maybe mitigating it, uh, allowing ourselves to really be with the impact is really important, but that doesn't mean that we, um, that the best way we can do is to try to coerce or force somebody into changing their thinking and their mind. So yeah, I'll say more about that later, but thanks for tuning in and listening.